I remember one guy, he's like, but Juby, you are talking about 80 or $90,000, but I do that. I make that. I'm a security guard. I make $26 an hour. I make that. I make more than $100,000 a year. I'm like, okay, how many hours on average you work a week? It's like, well, you know, on average, I work 50 to 60 hours. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> so you are now comparing apples and oranges. You know, you literally almost have to work the equivalent of two jobs yeah. to be able to make that 100000 Can you compare it with making $90,000 and having time and being home or available by 5.30? <laughs> Starting at 9, you know, and being free every weekend it's 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 a different lifestyle you know i i like to tell anyone considering it to make sure you do it for the right reason don't only do it for the money do it because you have some inclination with working with computers because you're going to be working with that computer for many hours on end so make sure you're comfortable with the idea of remote work and then you'll be fine and be willing to put in the work if that is something you're comfortable with, okay, dive in. Welcome back to the Custom Journeys podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Baines. Thank you all for staying tuned and checking out this episode. Today, we're going to be interviewing Juby Vilsius. He is the founder of Yellowtail Tech. And he and his company are dedicating to helping people with non-technical backgrounds transition into careers in IT or becoming cloud engineers. And so he's going to break down what his company does, his own career pathway into getting into tech, and then also some of the different opportunities that are available to you all. Um, and so I'm really excited to kind of pick his brain, learn a lot about how he built his business and how you can become successful. But do me a favor, before we get started, always forget to do this at the beginning. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I don't know what you're doing. What are you doing? Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, like this video, share it with a friend who's looking to get into tech. And um, now let's go ahead and jump into it and bring in Juby. Juby, my guy. Hey, thank you for having me, man. Thank you for having me. You had my wife on um, a few months ago. So I, I figured, you know, I show up too, man. Yeah, man, you had to. You know, I uh, I, I love talking to Paloma. Um, yeah, and by the time, I, towards the interview, end of our interview with her, I was like, okay, I got to get Juby on here. Um, to kind of pick your brain, learn about your story and everything like that. So thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. Cool. Hey, man. Well, I mean, you're in the studio. I love the studio, by the way. I love the merch. And thank you got you, the Yellowtail you. Tech on there on the shirt. Go ahead and give me like the elevator pitch for people that aren't familiar with Yellowtail Tech. What is yeah. Yellowtail Tech? Yeah, we are a company that specializes on training people with no IT background to transition into IT. So the way we try to differentiate our value proposition is that we focus specifically on um, people who, who are nurses, who are Uber drivers, you name it, that are eager to actually transition into tech, but not only transition, but build a career into tech. So that's what we do. We are an ed tech company that help people uh, transition into IT, basically. Okay, good stuff. And I know IT and tech is like so broad, right? You got like software engineering, data scientists, network engineers. Oh my goodness. And it, that's, the list goes on and on. So what specific roles do you kind of help people like transition into? Yeah. You're so right. And that's why we only have two programs. We only have two offerings. Uh, we train people either to become Linux system administrators or cloud system administrators, not necessarily engineer on their way to become cloud engineers but um that's where we focus and for the exact reason you said there are so many ways to get into it we figured being the jack of all trade trying to offer uh, programs to everyone uh, wouldn't be the best way to deliver what we deliver so we specifically focus on linux and aws because aws is built on linux a lot of people don't realize that so it's 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 an natural progression of our company to actually go into cloud, but not any cloud provider, but most specifically AWS. So that's what we do. We focus on Linux and cloud, but most importantly, AWS in terms of um, cloud offering. Okay. 
No, and I was, um, I told your wife, like I was familiar. I got exposed to Linux in college. I took a high performance computing class and um, that was kind of like my initial exposure. I don't know, for some people that may not have a tech background, they may not be that familiar with it. I'm, I know you got like the terminal and you can kind of navigate through there with some basic commands like LS and change your directory, you're hitting CD and then mm -hmm. the directory name. Yeah. I feel, you know, I felt I learned a couple of basic commands, Chamad, CD, LS, things like mm -hmm. that. And then also VM and VI. I felt dangerous. But for the people that aren't really familiar with, with Linux and things like that, can you kind of just give like an overview of what Linux is and how it compares to other operating systems? Yeah, you just said it. Linux is just an operating system. Um, a lot of people, uh, by the way, uh, fun fact, about 80 percent of people who come to us, they come to transition into IT they had no clue what Linux was before stumbling onto Yellowtail Tech. So not knowing about Linux before actually seeing this podcast, for example, is not necessarily something that's going to hold you from transitioning. But what Linux is, it's just an operating system, just like uh, most people have a Windows computer or a Mac computer uh, on your Windows computer. Windows is the operating system, right? Linux is an operating system, but mostly used in enterprise environments. Yes, there are people who use them, who use Linux on their personal computer, but it's actually a fraction, like less than 1%. So we've trained people, we train people to actually know this operating system well enough to actually operate it in an enterprise environment. So the way I like to say it, Linux is to the enterprise environment, what Windows is to the personal computing environment. You have an operating system on your laptop at home. Um, the servers running all your data on the internet, they have an operating system called Linux. So that's, that's actually the best way to illustrate it to someone who's not too tech side. I, I like that breakdown. I think that's very relatable. Man, you, you hit on a, a point like it doesn't require a tech background. You kind of mentioned like Uber drivers and things like that. So the majority of your customers don't have a tech background. So like, where are these people like stay at home moms transitioning into tech? Are they veterans coming back to tech? Are they like college dropouts? Like what's kind of like, and I don't know if you have a, a particular story in mind, okay. but like, what are some of the different backgrounds that people kind of come from? I can tell you some anecdotal stories about the different background, but I can tell you there's no trend. We actually are eager to look for a trend. The only trend we see is that about 50% or more of our students have a bachelor or more and something else from another country, usually. Uh, that's, that's the only trend. But what they are currently doing varies from, like you said, uh, uh, like I said, an Uber driver, uh, sell someone who was um, selling parts at a dealership to someone who was a nurse, to a stay-at-home mom, we've done that. Paloma was a stay-at-home mom at the time when she transitioned. The only consistent pattern we see is someone who's doing something they absolutely are done with. That, to me, uh, uh, also, that's the most important requirement. Someone who's actually trying their best to move away from what they're currently doing. We've seen that this is uh, the kind of students that actually make this work. If you are in a position or in a job that, yeah, you're doing okay, it would be nice to change career. It would be nice to make a few thousand dollars more. This person is not necessarily going to be the person who succeeds. It's the person who wakes up in the morning and literally feels sick about going into work. And tr uh, trust me, they're going to show up, they're going to do the work. They're going to, you know, do everything that's required of them to actually transition. So that's the patterns we see, not necessarily the background of the people, of the person enrolling really. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I could, I can definitely picture that. Like the person that's sick and tired of being sick and tired, like of their job, like, it's like, I've had enough. I'm ready uh, to quit. Yeah. I can't do this no more. Um, exactly. so I can definitely understand that, that pain and that struggle of like and looking for something more. And there's an inverse correlation. We've, believe it or not, we didn't start by focusing on people with no IT background. Me with my business mind came into this and said, 
it would just be easier to train people with some IT background who are, for example, help desk and help desk who dropped out of school for IT and wants to get back in. And we realized these students were not our best uh, 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 um, students in terms of conversion into a job. It were the, the people with no IT background, because when you're training someone who's already in the industry or who knows so much, they come with more questions. They question the process more. They try to do this in their own uh, style and their own pace, as opposed to the person who comes as a, as a blank canvas and follow the process, how we know it works best because they don't have any other reference. They don't have any other choice, but just to listen, take it in, take it in in the format we deliver it and actually make it work. So after a few years and I saw the pattern, I'm like, you know what? This is the niche. This is the niche of the people who are coming to us, eager to transition, who are doing the work with whom we are actually succeeding. Let's focus on them. Let's actually start designing program for them specifically. And let's make this our, our business, our value proposition. So that's the difference between Yellow Tail Tech and other uh, training centers. Some other training centers, they happen to train people with no IT background, but they would not rather train people with no IT background. We make it our business to train people with no IT background. So the way we build our program, the way we deliver it, the way we offer support, the way we offer accountability, all is in the mindset of someone with a life, with a job, and that has no clue, that probably didn't even know what Linux was before coming in, uh, into our programs. So it's a different mindset. It's a different disposition to train someone with absolutely no IT background. I see a lot of that in like some of the audience that tunes into this podcast. I definitely know there was like a reset that happened when the pandemic hit, right? And like a lot of people had time to sit down, pause and reflect on like where they're at. And a lot of people want more. They want more salary. They want more options with their career. Um, they want a higher income so that they can have a, a better experience in life. And then also to your point about like the hunger like that's required for this, I could definitely tell and see why you have probably a good amount of people from like an international background, like immigrants for whatever reason come to this hunger and they like, yo, yeah. the hell out the way, I'm hungry. Like I'm not here for a purpose. Not only they're hungrier, it's that they, it's more difficult for someone with an international degree of any, from anywhere to yeah. actually come here and translate that international degree into a proper career in the U.S. without going back to school for, on average, three to five years. Gotcha. You see? So this is a very attractive proposition for them, you see, to actually go to something that doesn't require a degree, you know, because we have another group that have actually never been to college, you know, that has a few yeah. college uh, uh, credit here and there. You see, but that has no bearing, absolutely no bearing on our data where uh, your background in terms of your education um, has to do with uh, your success rate. What does success look like for the students after going through either the uh, yeah. Linux for jobs or cloud for jobs role? Like they complete either program. What, what does success look like for them? Yeah, success in simple terms to us means landing a job. That's why we call it Linux for jobs or cloud for jobs, because we didn't want to ever forget why we came into this business in the first place is not to train, but to actually help you transition to get a job and to give you the foundation to turn this job into a career. So su success for us is to get a job within six months or less. That's what we measure. That's the only thing we measure in terms of success, actually. We have a 68% job placement rate uh, within um, six months and a 78% job placement rate within a year. Although it's already above average, we can improve that uh, job placement rate. We are working on it and it's, all, it's been improving. So um, that's what success means to us. And um, we never de detach the, 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 the training and, and the job, because a lot of other places, they are in the business of training. We are in the business of helping you get a, jo a job. 
Now, that implies training, but that also implies so much more because we don't only get you trained. We make sure you get certified. We make sure you get access to an apprenticeship. We make sure you get the most support, dedicated career support. So uh, our process is very much cradle to grave, meaning from A to Z, we help you transition. Oh, that's good to hear. Cause I, I know like, and, and you've made a point to clearly make the distinction between a boot camp and Yellowtail Tech. But my, a lot of times my frustration with a boot camp is like, hey, it's like, number one, the amount of information they're trying to teach you within 15, 18 weeks is like crazy. Um, but then number two is like, you don't always, depending on what boot camp you go through, you don't always get those resources and support yeah. after the fact. It's kind of like, okay, hey, you did 15 weeks, good luck, like, go land a job. So I think focusing on the job part is so important. And that's the yeah. whole point. Even my frustration with college, same thing. It's like, hey, four years of some institution, and it's like, hey, you have a career fair that pops up every once in a while. But, like, if you're not taking the initiative to, like, go live in the career services offices, or like seek out those opportunities. Like you can go through a four year degree program, never gain any yeah. experience that employees actually value and then be stuck senior year trying to like land an internship or a job for the first time without any experience and really be like, okay, I wasted 50 or a hundred grand on an education. So I think it's important for not only you guys, but other people to like focus on the job component. That's the most important yeah. part of it. That's actually that's actually why I insisted to have a tuition reimbursement program where if you don't land a job within six months after completing your apprenticeship, you get your money back. I had two lawyers tell me, you know, you don't have to have that clause in your enrollment. Mm -hmm. But I said, I want to have it. I want to send a message to the marketplace that I'm committed to the promise of the, uh, of the brand. You know, the promise is we, you put in the work, we help you get to the finish line. So um, that's, that's one thing that's important to us as well. Um, the job component, that's why, again, we call it Linux for Jobs, but also making sure we show you that we are committed in that process as well with you. Man, okay. Julie, you putting your money up in a lot of different ways. You know, yeah, starting we, a business. We, we put, literally, we put our money where our mouth is. Okay. No, that's exciting, man. That's good to hear. I, I like hearing that. You know, it shows, you know, the confidence and it shows your commitment as well. So I can appreciate that a lot. De nice. Definitely more commitment than con confidence, though. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. <laughs> good stuff. Hey, we're, we're going to keep talking about Yellowtail Tech, but I kind of want to learn a little bit more about you and your, your pathway, your journey to starting Yellowtail Tech. So I know you you went to the you guys are based in in Maryland right now. Well, real quick for this program, is it remote or is it in person or what? Actually, this is a whole story, so I can start with this. We were in person, and I was convinced the fact that students came to a physical lo location um, and actually got um, the training delivered to them in person was our secret sauce. You know, I had so many advice about advice from everyone around me saying, hey, we need to take this uh, nationwide remotely. And I, I resisted it as much as I could. And um, during the pandemic, uh, it made itself more obvious. We were moving to a hybrid format where you could either be online or show up to class physically. And then the pandemic hit we had to transition and we realized not only we were reaching more people but the quality uh, of the program the uh, the results we were able to deliver didn't get affected and then we decided we're gonna go completely online we're never gonna look back we actually the way i actually made sure i did i couldn't go back is that we had a big training center I made sure I didn't renew the list, lease, mm. uh, you know, to force me to actually build a platform that relies only on, on a, a remote apparatus. So we are completely online. Gotcha. Okay. But you had a, a few other question you asked me. So what are you? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I appreciate you breaking that down. That gives me a little bit of the history. But um, man, where'd you get? I know you taught Paloma a lot of the, I, the Linux and IT stuff and cloud um things like that or you at least kind of encourage her to pursue this route 
But, like, yeah. how did you kind of get here to this point of starting Yellow Tail Tech? And I guess I know you were studying at the University of Maryland at one point, you know, for IT, I believe. Or yeah. was it IT or business? So it's management information system. It's just a, a program that is more focused on helping you be in the business of technology, deliver and design and manage uh, businesses that are in the business of delivering technology of some sort. So I'm, exa I'm doing exactly what I went to school for. But okay. after college, I couldn't get a job. So going to the, to, to what you, your complaint was about colleges. So once in a while, there would be a job fair here, you know, but there wasn't that commitment after graduation to actually make sure you transition into something very valuable because after all, you just spent four years here, you, you know, you are 60, a hundred thousand dollars. And I don't even remember. And then I was complaining to a friend of mine. And he said, you should add something more technical to your portfolio. And I have this guy who's training people in Linux. And I'm like, yeah, what? well, I, I like you, I learned Linux a little bit in, in, in college. I know to, how to move around, but I wasn't even familiar with the scope of what Linux is and what it represents in the uh, IT um, in industry. And I went to this guy. Um, he was training people on a personal level on his spare time. He trained me and then I was able to get my first job in, in, in IT as a Linux system administrator. And I told him, thank you. Um, not only I'm going to always make sure I thank you in public for actually helping me transition, but um, I'm going to make this bigger. One day I will make this bigger and I, more people will understand and know about Linux. And then I stop even thinking about that because I transition in more managerial role and more business uh, development, IT business development. And then when Paloma, it was time for her to transition. I'm like, hey, I have this whole network um, who, who's still working as system engineers at this point uh, in Linux. Uh, let, let me call on them and let me, let, let's have them support Paloma because me, at this point, I was so far removed uh, uh, um, with Linux, I couldn't be the one training Paloma. But I called on my uh, support network and we made it happen. So basically, that's what I do, you know, get things going, build a, a system, build, uh, you know, bring people together and make things happen. So that's what I did with Paloma. That's what we keep doing. Because me, a lot of people are surprised. I've never taught one class at Yellow Tail Tech. I am not that technical to be able to deliver it. I, I understand it. I can, you know, advise on uh, how, how the program is built, but uh, Paloma is the deep tech person who can actually deliver on the details of the program. I like that. I like that you like, you have awareness about it. You had some exposure, you had some experience with it, but even you kind of realize, hey, like, you're kind of removed from the day-to-day, -day, like being in the, yeah, you in the in the trenches of it to where it's like, Hey, who can I leverage or who can I partner with to like deliver the amount of training that people are going to need to be successful and know the ins and outs and other stuff like the back of their hand. So talk yeah. to me a little bit about like the early days of yellow tail tech, like even that first student that you guys worked with, like, did you kind of reach out to a buddy of yours? Like, Hey, I need you to teach this part of the class. Another buddy, I need you to teach this part of the class. And I got this person ready to go. They're signed up, ready to pay. This is how we're going to make it work. Like, tell me those early days. I'm, you're shaking no, your hand, no, so I guess I'm assumably completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're completely wrong. <laughs> but it was none of that. It was actually okay. after Paloma transitioned. And uh, then people were surprised and happy to see that. And we started helping family members and friends for two years. A lot of people, you know, it, my story, Yellowtail Tech story, is not like most other startups where we had that very sharp and clear business plan. And then we went into the marketplace. We didn't stop and blew up. It, it never happened like that. Okay. It was us helping family and friends for about two years. And then we realized, hey, we have something here. We have the ability to build a program. And then we did it organically. We started very small, not even charging. And then 
and that was in 2014. And in 2016, we're like, we're ready to properly package this into an offering. And then that's when we did it. It was a very small cohort. It was one cohort. It was like eight or 10 students. And um, we started like that. And we actually spent the first three years not running one ad. So it was on referral only from the su success we've, we've had with the students who came through our program. So it was a very slow and organic uh, growth we had, at least uh, in the beginning. Of course, after we went online uh, 100%, we, we experienced exponential growth, like something like 300% growth. That's also why we made it to the Inc. 5000 uh, uh, list of uh, fastest growing company for 2023. So, um, so um, but it didn't start with that very, you know, sharp uh, um, uh, um, business plan that you see on Shark, a Shark Tank or anything like that, you know. It, no, but I think there's there's a lot of value to be taken away there. I think, you know, in the startup world, you assume everything moves like lightning fast and it's like instant success overnight. But I think sometimes when you see that, you also see like companies that don't truly provide a lot of value or solve a problem or a pain point significant enough. And they're like trying to grasp at straws, so to speak, and try to figure out, okay, oh, our thing can do this and maybe that or maybe this. But I think you guys taking those two years where, hey, you maybe didn't even charge like family and friends to like learn the material, yeah. that kind of really, the fact that they were willing to go through that amount of work, even if it was for free, that showed you, okay, hey, this is something that people are willing to potentially pay for. It's a significant problem where it's like, hey, they're make, working a job, maybe making 25K, 30K, and you're giving them the opportunity to, you know, maybe make 80 or 90 or even 100 or more. And so I think that really kind of gave you time to work out some of the kinks and really see what problem you were solving. And what happens with the companies that are VC backed, that have outside money in general, is that they must deliver quick return because when you have investment money in your hands, they expect a certain amount of return every year. We, uh, as a self-funded company, we don't have that pressure. We grow and we will continue to grow at the pace we are convinced uh, we should uh, grow because we are also looking at not only growth in terms of enrollment, but uh, growth in terms of how we deliver this, how we are improving iteratively what we offer, how we are improving our success rate. Um, this is all that we look uh, before we just focus on growth, 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 growth. And um, that's, that's mostly the big difference between um, our company and some other places because they must by all means deliver these growth numbers. I don't have to. I have I, my only responsibility is to keep the promise of really helping you transition and grow organically at a very comfortable and steady pace. I like that. That's a, that's a great point. You're not indebted to investors. You're just indebted to the, the customers you serve. So just focusing and, on fulfilling that promise. And also, I'm more committed on this brand being built on solid foundation to, to be around in 10, 20 years. Gotcha. Because if you look around, all the boot camps, not all, a lot of them, they flame out of, uh, of, of existence because they have to be growing so fast. And sometimes it's unsustainable and they flame out of existence, yeah. you know? And I, com I am committed to not let that happen to Yellow Talk. <laughs> okay, good stuff. Hey man, so walk me through the timeline. So you said 2014, 2016, you guys. From 2014 to 2016, we were, you know, figuring out what it is we, we are offering. Yeah. From 2016 to 2019, we were actually delivering results in a formal uh, environment. We we're growing. In 2020, we were about to launch our hybrid model. And then the, the pandemic hit. And we had to leave all these investments sitting in our office and be completely online. And then we realized all this, these apparatus, we didn't need them. 
yeah. to actually deliver the results. And of course, in 2021, because we were completely online, we were able to train people from literally Maryland all the way to Hawaii, you know? So we were able to grow faster. We actually not only uh, grow in terms of in being able to enroll students, but we grow in terms of being able to hire the best instructor wherever they were in the U.S. So nine years in business going on 10, what, what would you say are like some of the biggest challenges that you've overcome as an entrepreneur? Because entrepreneurship is nothing easy, right? Like it's a lot of long nights, a lot of stressful nights, a lot of lessons learned. And you kind of talked about learning a lot of lessons from that 2014 and 2016 window. But just in terms of like building the ed tech platform and understanding what people are looking for, working with companies to understand like, okay, what uh, skills are they um, desiring or having demand for them? What would you say are like some of the biggest challenges that you've had to overcome as like a business owner in this whole process? Yeah, at every stage was a different challenge, really. At the first stage was are we building something that can convert? I mean, conversion to me, when I say convert, is help people get jobs. So well, that was the first uh, uh, issue for us because not only we train people, we're like, okay, once we're done training you, what the market, what we see the market is asking for is a certification. So we added that to our offering. And um, this were the challenges, understanding what we can offer to actually be able to deliver on the promise. These were the first issues. The second part, uh, the second um, challenge I had to um, face was how do I start growing uh, beyond referrals? Because if you have a, a business, that only relies on referral, you are very much at risk. So, um, because I told you the first years we didn't do that. And uh, this, uh, this is also when I realized the importance of the company having a face uh, so people can attach a person to the brand. That's when I had to uh, challenge myself to be able to appear as, uh, as the face to the brand because a lot of people don't realize how important that is. So I had to do a lot of work on myself to be able to uh, be comfortable doing what I'm doing with you now um, to actually get to the next level. So basically to, in, order, in order to grow, and as you're gonna also see in your business journey, every stage comes a whole new and different a challenge to to conquer so that's that's where we are right now gotcha what what what's your personality type are you more introverted extroverted what what do you i am um i am a, a very much an introvert that can you know show up when when it's time to show up <laughs> okay but the best place you'd find me is in front of my couch watching netflix so <laughs> i'm very much an introvert an introvert Gotcha. Now I'm the same way, man. People hear that I have a podcast and you're like, you're not introverted. And I'm like, yes, I yeah. am. Like when the camera is not on, like I just want to be low key chilling in the background. I don't have to be the guy in the front with all the t attention and I'm not a social butterfly. Yeah. So definitely understand that. What, what, real quick, what are you watching on Netflix nowadays? What's your favorite like show at the moment? Um, at the moment, I don't, last night I watched uh, Equalizer 3. Okay. But at the moment, I don't do much uh, uh, um, TV in general. You know, gotcha. I I stay away from um, series. I, I, if only if it's a short series, like a limited series of six episodes that I know I can finish in a very finite uh, uh, um, amount of time. I don't get into series. You know, no, I'd rather be. You know, that's that's what I do with my time. Yeah, no, I understand, man. You get wrapped up in a show and it's like it's too good, and then you realize, yo, like you spent the last two weeks and, staying up till midnight and watching two this. Weeks. In terms of hours, you look at a show and you see it has six, uh, uh, um, let's say six seasons at twenty episodes a season, and you realize you like how many hours? What twenty? You know, a hundred twenty hours in. Yeah, or 80 hours in that's a lot of wasted time 
You see, yeah. people don't look at it that way, but um, yeah, it's entertainment. You not you need that, but my downtime, I, I'd rather spend it either relaxing, uh, enjoying my family, or reading. I, um, you know, reading and understanding how to properly grow um, yellowtail tech. Yeah, I started watching Suits, and I was like, okay, this is way too many episodes for me on Netflix to be. I was like, let me just fast forward to the last episode and see how everything plays out. So I definitely yeah. understand that. Um, but yeah, man, good stuff. So Yellowtail Tech talked about the journey to creating it, talked a little bit about the program itself. Um, so Linux for jobs, clouds for jobs, obviously people can enroll in Yellowtail Tech and they'll, you know, obviously have the opportunity to become a Linux systems administrator, uh, cloud engineer. What are, what are some of the other pathways just so people know? Um, I just like to be a make sure people are aware of like the different pathways. So is this something you can go to college for? Obviously you can do enroll in Yellowtail Tech and do this. Is this something that you can be self-taught and do? But like, what are some of the different landscapes or different uh, pathways that people yeah. have to doing this? Actually, the only way to do this is to get a very specialized training like mine. Probably not mine because uh, it's not necessarily something you can go to college and learn. It's usually either you learn it at work, you were, you know, a system administrator in Windows, and then they kind of train you on, on, on the job. Or you train yourself by buying uh, Udemy classes, by going on uh, um, Linux Academy, a cloud guru, and so on. So there's usually two routes. Either you go to a, a, um, an institution like Yellowtail Tech, or you do the self-paced route where you go on different platform, you are able to curate you know enough to curate what it is you need not only in terms of training but in terms of peripheral knowledge contextual knowledge to actually do this by yourself uh, the second option uh, um, which is the um, which is the self-paced usually what it takes people on is uh, the the trap of training and circle so they go on udemy they buy uh, a few $15 courses about networking, about Linux, and then they realize, okay, I've learned this, but what do I do next? Um, because this and any other um, IT track, the training itself is very important, but there are many other processes to actually uh, um, uh, make happen to actually transition from a uh, non-IT person to someone with training, with certification, with the proper hands-on knowledge, with a, a resume that makes sense, being able to articulate what it is you, you know under pressure in an interview to getting a job. There is so much more than the actual training. So a lot of people, they come to me after realizing that it takes more than training because a lot of people uh, look at my training. They're like, oh, it's too long or it's too expensive. Let me try to do that myself. And they, they, they try that for like six months, a year or even two years. And they still come to me, which, uh, you know, there is an opportunity cost to that because um, when you try to do this by yourself, it takes more time. You don't have the support you need and you realize that down the line where you could have been working and, and transitioning all, already in the industry. So to answer quickly uh, your question, there are two ways to do it. Either you enroll in a very formal uh, training that is specifically trying to get you to become a Linux system administrator or a cloud uh, um, system admin or a cloud system engineer, or you do this yourself by going to Cloud Ac Academy, Linux Academy, you, the me, and so on. And I think you hit on something within there, even that communication part, right? Like understanding, okay, yeah, you know the technical skill set of it, but the experience of being able to communicate what you worked on and uh, give presentations on that, that's such a big part of the actual job itself, right? Because we don't work in vacuums. We typically work in teams, and you have to communicate what you did or why you did what you did, even if yeah. it's just in an interview or if it's actually to communicate to the rest of your team. So that's no. good. That, that's something you guys provide too in your program? Yeah. Not only you don't work in a vacuum, you have to work in teams, but Linux is the operating system that you work on, but there are many peripheral tools you need to do the job. You know, um, that's what our apprenticeship are able, uh, is able to give you. 
how do you receive a ticket when a problem arises? How do you actually address it? Uh, what are the tools that actually integrate with uh, the operating system to actually deliver on, uh, on the job? All these are important. And you cannot go on Udemy and you can, but you, you have to know what to even learn. A lot of people, besides understanding how to move around the operating system, there's so much to know uh, to, in order to actually become a professional that can show up to a job and add value. So that's all we offer in the, in the package, you know, in the program, you know. It's, 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 a, it's a stacking of different skills that mm. actually get you the job. It's not only a, a Linux training. What I love to tell people is there's not one thing I offer or I say, you can look at my program catalog and you, uh, that you cannot go on Google and look it up and learn it on your own. So what we are offering is not the secret. What we are offering is a, is a system, is the process, is the support we offer is the iterative uh, improvement on the apparatus we offer for you to learn this, uh, uh, this skill. So the, the training itself, you can Google that, you yeah. know, it, it's all over the place. You know, yeah. you can how there are guys on, online right now, you can Google how to uh, um, learn about Linux. You don't even have to buy a course. You're going to find it. But what do you do with that information? How do you contextualize it? How do you make sure you, you're getting the right information for, for, the, for the level you are right now? These are the things we offer and, and, and at Yellow Delta. That's a good point. I, I find classes on Harvard and Columbia and Penn on YouTube all the time. And I mean, it's like, yeah, it's the same, and lot of, especially from an engineering standpoint. Like there are a lot of engineering classes that I took in college and I can find the same thing even better or explain more clearly on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if you only have that and you don't have like the rest of it that goes with it, like the office hours with the professor or the project, the team projects or the career services at the university. And then exactly. you know, it's not the or same. How do you experience. even articulate that, in, that knowledge on, on a resume? Yeah. All of that. Okay. Are the, gotcha. How do you articulate that knowledge in an interview? Yeah. yeah. So that's what we offer. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Hey, what, what is the, like, what's kind of like a day in the life, like for a Linux engineer or a cloud engineer, like what are they actually doing during the day? Is it like, I'm assuming you're doing a lot of stuff on a computer, but can you kind of like discuss what, what some of that day to day looks like for them? Well, the first thing I can tell you, uh, I have to illustrate the concept of a stack. Every company has a different technology stack, meaning what tools they use to what end they use Linux, it's gonna vary from company to company. So first, the day in the life of system administrator A is never gonna be the same as the day in the life of system administrator uh, B. Because for example, if you're working at the NIH, you're supporting researchers, what you do with the operating system is very different if, if you work uh, as it, if, if you were working at Sony, where they are focusing on delivering streaming uh, service to their clients. So the day in the life of a system administrator is to, in general, and that's to be very generic, to show up, look at what's happening with the operating system. How is it interacting with the other technologies that integrate into the operating system and troubleshoot, fix, anticipate what could be the problems and secure your environment. That's what it, it means uh, in general, but um, the day in the life of someone um, who's working at uh, company A is so different uh, than what a, a company B does is it's difficult to, to, to really uh, uh, grasp. What I would suggest people to do is actually to go on YouTube and type the data in the life of a system administrator. And you're going to see so many people explaining what they do. And you're going to see there is almost nothing in common between the first video you watch uh, about, uh, and, the, and the fourth one you watch. 
because it's very different. The only thing that's core is that all of them at one point, if there is an issue, they have to be able to log into the server and be able to investigate. That's one of the only recurring theme you're going to see, you know, it part of the job is to be able to address issues specifically with the operating system on all those servers that you are responsible for. And it, one thing that uh, makes it very difficult to, to illustrate is that depending on the size of the company, you can be a system administrator out of 15, a team of 15, or you can be a system administrator that manages the whole operate, uh, operation. So um, depending on the size of your team, um, it also inform how specialized what you do uh, uh, becomes. Because some, some big environment, uh, they are so uh, big, they need um, specialized system administrators. There are some administrators that do nothing but monitor um, intrusion. Some are focused on doing updates and patching to make sure those uh, servers are uh, have their latest um, updates installed. Some are building more servers to add to 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 the um, to the operation. So it really depends on where you land. But um, you're gonna get all this training uh, with us, so that way, anywhere you land, you can with of course additional training that you we will always get on the job you you'll be okay so that's that's the goal no and i think that's important for people to know like so they can kind of know what to expect in terms of being able to visualize hey is this something that i'm interested in or something i want to pursue and obviously yeah. like, i i love that breakdown of those two different scenarios like if you're on a big team obviously yeah. you may work on something very niche whereas like hey if you're on a small team where you're a one man or one woman band hey, you yeah be well versed in everything. not necessarily on one person you know because yeah, that's well, a smaller rare. team, a smaller team, you do more, you do multiple stuff. You see what yeah. I mean? But if you are in a very big and specialized team, you can find yourself doing something uh, more specific. And um, yeah, so many things affect how you work. But the, the recurring thing is that it's going to most likely be remote. You're going to always be on your computer. And that's what I tell people. Make sure you're comfortable working remote interacting uh with people on you know on messenger all day because for some people it it doesn't work with their personality you know and i tell that to people a lot it gets lonely yeah it gives you the flexibility to be wherever you, you want to be but uh some people need the the office setup the uh, the camaraderie that happens you know in a physical location and you're not going to get much of that, especially after COVID. So you have to make sure that's, uh, that's something you're comfortable with. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I meet a lot of people that are only looking for remote work. And um, I've done purely remote work for two years. And I was like, this is going to drive me crazy. But I mean, that's something that people have to be comfortable with. And now I go to a co-working space where I'm like surrounded by other people, get to meet and talk to people all the time while still working. So um, that can be the remote aspect can definitely be a benefit for a lot of people. Um, oh yeah. Some people, that's the only reason they come in to get yeah. that flexibility at home, especially, um, parents of, um, little, uh, uh newborns and, you know, small mm -hmm. kids, it works for them. They need the flexibility, yeah. but, uh, with the, you know, some level of isolation comes with that flexibility. That's the only warning, but yeah. For most, the flexibility outweighs the, the the other part. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, man, so one of the reasons why people look to make this change outside of just the remote component of it is obviously like the salary component of it, right? Like they're, hey, I'm in a certain job making X amount of money. I want a higher income. I want higher earning potential. Um, what are some of like the salary trends that you've kind of seen or some of the, it doesn't have to be an exact number, but some of the salary ranges that you've seen yeah. for some of your students and then even beyond, even beyond yeah. that. It cannot be an exact number because there are so many uh, variable to that, but it varies between anywhere between 80 to 90,000, uh, sometimes 95 for entry level. 
but a lot of people don't realize there's such a thing as what they call the adaptive interview process. So basically two people trained by Yellowtail by the same process can go to the same interview. One comes out with a $95,000 offer. One comes out with an $80,000 offer, depending on how they delivered, how they sold themselves. Because the way the adaptive interview process works is that let's say they are interviewing for a junior position, but they have three positions open. And the way you are performing, you are performing at a above junior level. So they're like, okay, let's go higher with this guy. Let's go deeper with him. And you start, you know, con you continue uh, the interview even uh, being even more convincing. They're like, okay, this guy is interviewing at a mid-level position. Let's test him deeper. And they realize, you know, that senior guy who's about to leave, Juby can do his job. So now they're going to come in with an offer that's higher to be able to match the, the, the responsibility they're going to offer. You see what I mean? So that's why it's very tricky to uh, tell you what the average is. The average, yeah, there's always an average and it's around 80 to 90,000, but it also has to do with where you get the job. If you are in North Carolina, you would get a very different offer uh, it, uh, from if you were living in um, New York or San Francisco. So um, it has to do with how you interview the uh the adaptive interview process and, and most importantly where the job is and where they are hiring you from what location they are hiring you from and third the budget of the company because if uh, some companies just have more money to offer to anyone who come for the job so that's that that plays a big role some businesses are more generous generous because they they believe the more they can spare to give you, the more likely you're going to stay with them because hiring is very expensive. Um, so they, they hire to keep you. So the more they give you, the more you're going to be looking outside and, you know, job hopping in a year. So it, it varies. There's a lot of variables. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's a good note that people should be aware of, you know, and I think getting the, the repetitions or the experience with interviewing learning how to communicate, learning how to negotiate, all of that goes into making sure you put your best foot forward so that you can maximize your earning potential at, at the job. Yeah, and that's what we do. We do a lot of mock interviews, um, compulsive. That's part of the requirement of the program. So we can make sure you are very comfortable, not only articulating what you know, but articulating it very well under pressure uh, this is a this is a skill, you know, just like you need to know how to move around the operating system. You need to know how to articulate the value you're going to bring to the company. So that's a, a, another pro a part of the process uh, when you come at Yellow Tail Tech. Good. Good stuff. So now that's a great that's a great earning potential. I mean, um, you told me earlier the Linux for Jobs program. Is it six months or nine months? Yeah, six months. Six months, and then the cloud for jobs is around uh, nine months nine or a year. Months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, gotcha. The minimum commitment uh, for when I say commitment, there's a difference between the length of the program and the commitment of working with us. Because after the program, there's the apprenticeship. So the minimum commitment for the Linux for jobs is nine months, and the minimum commitment for the cloud for jobs is uh, closer to a year to actually properly transition. Okay, got you. So that's the training and the apprenticeship portion of it. Okay, good And stuff. job support and, and, and everything, yeah. Okay, good stuff. So within that time frame, you could go to whatever you're making, if it's 30, 40K to nearly doubling or even yeah. tripling your salary in some cases. Okay, yeah. good stuff, good stuff. Um, man, are there any like students in particular that you're like, so-and-so was like, amazing story that like people oh, yeah. got to hear that resonates oh, with yeah. people yeah i i have you know i remember when i uh, was training in person and the only kind of um advertising i used to do believe it or not was putting flyers in supermarkets <laughs> <laughs> crazy man 
I've come, we've come such a long way from this. And he showed up, he was um, uh, part, he was selling part at a dealership. He's like, I'm ready. I don't know what you do here too well, but this flyer spoke to me. I'm here to actually uh, um, get whatever you're offering. His name is Chip. You can actually go on the, uh, on the website and see uh, his uh, success story. Now he's, he's, uh, uh, he came back like now probably four or five years later, he, he's, uh, he's an instructor for us, but his story is amazing. He showed up, did everything we told, her to, we told him to do, and he got a job. And then, well, of course, I was very excited when he got a job. After a year, you see, I'm still getting goosebumps saying that after a year, of working with us, he, he wrote me a note telling me, thank you. I'm about to close on my house. Now I can be, I can have a house in a neighborhood where I can send my kids to school that I, uh, uh, in the neighborhood I always dreamed of uh, uh, living. So these are the, 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 the stories that keep inspiring me. Um, the stories of changing lives we are not only in the uh helping you change career but with that i've, I've changed uh, i've helped change so many lives man because when you take someone in a completely different uh, uh social e economical uh, uh, bracket you put them in a, a social a, a whole different social economical bracket you are you have the ability to change their lives where they send their kids to school, where they can send their, their, their kids to college, what they can do, you know, in general with their lives. So that's, to me, that's the most interesting part of my, my business. That to me is the biggest reason why I even started this podcast was because I knew what a, a career in engineering or tech did for me in my career. And the ability to buy a house and send my kids to a good school, the ability to travel the world, um, yes. the ability to like live a lifestyle and not just, you know, like struggle, yep. but to thrive. Yep. And like all those things are the things that I want other people to have the same access yeah. to opportunities too. And a lot of times it's just stuff that like, honestly speaking, like people from our background don't always have exposure to. And so I think it's important for them to like be made aware of these things that they can live that, that lifestyle. Yeah, the ability to have time because now you don't have to work two jobs to make yeah. the kind of money you envision you need to give your family, um, you know, the life they, they deserve. Because sometimes if you, you know, if you slap two $45,000 job together, you might almost be at a hundred thousand dollars, but you never dare for your kids. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you see? So, buying back your time to spend with your family, to keep growing as a person, as a professional, um, that has its own value because a lot of, not a lot. I remember one guy, he's like, but Juby, you are talking about 80 or $90,000, but I do that. I make that. I'm a security guard. I make $26 an hour. I make that. I make more than $100,000 a year. I'm like, okay, how many hours on average you work a week? It's like, well, you know, on average I work 50 to 60 hours. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> so you are now comparing apples and oranges. You know, you literally almost have to work the equivalent of two jobs yeah. to be able to make that 100,000. Can you compare it with making $90,000 and having time and being home or available by 5 30 yeah. <laughs> starting at nine you know and being free every weekend it's 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 a different lifestyle you know all of that and then when you factor in like the flexibility part right because i mean i know when when the news came out that ups drivers make like 160 or 100 and something a lot of tech workers were like man it's not fair they're making damn near the same as us but you got to factor in like they're in the heat they're in the rain a lot of times those trucks don't even have like the full AC or whatever in them, depending on where they're at. Um, and so it's like, you've got to factor in all those other things. And it's like, okay, hey, Apple, if you just from a salary standpoint, if you can make the same money driving a truck or the same money working from home, like being able to like spend time with your kids throughout the day, which one would you pick? And so it's like, yeah. 
not even get into like all the overtime you have to work to actually make that money. Um, exactly. Again, it goes back to the time and the options that you have. So great. And point. one thing, one very important thing you said it's UPS. Remember, I told you some companies can afford to pay you more to make you a more loyal employee. They can afford that because they understand mm -hmm. higher attrition rate, higher uh, rotation is not necessarily uh, 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 cheaper for them. So they can do that. They invest in that. But some other companies, they don't have that kind of margin to work to 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 pay everyone one hundred seventy thousand dollars. UPS has it, but um, not every company does. Yep, absolutely. Hey, I um, want to kind of come to a close, but before I do, just kind of tell me, like, the I know you, you mentioned the, the time frame or the commitment for these programs. What's kind of, what can people expect when they get into the program, number one? Yeah, we'll stop there. I got a secondary question about, um, I know your cloud for jobs is limited. You're limiting it to 80 people a year. So I guess for number one, what can people expect when they get into the program in terms of like the day to day, in terms of the learning, number of yeah. hours committed and all that? So for the cloud for jobs, the number we first of all, the reason why we limit it is um, learning cloud and properly learning it. Unlike what you see out there, there is a lot of commitment. You have to have about 12 hours a, a week outside of class to be able to dedicate to that. So. Uh, the, cal the calculus we made is we are in the business of value, not volume. So we wanted to actually uh, focus on 80 students uh, at least for 2024. And that's going to grow, but we wanted to grow with our improved placement rate because now we are tracking uh, 68 to 78. But once our placement rate improves, we're going to conservatively grow how many students uh, we are taking. But now we not only are focusing on enrolling, we're focusing on enrolling the right student. And the right student in our mind is the student that has time, the stu is the student that's committed, is the student that has the, um, the base uh, computer literacy, because now you have to pass, uh, uh, with us, we, you have to pass a computer literacy assessment. And if you have all that and some other pointers we know um, predict uh, um, success, we, we will uh, work with you. Because we want to transition slowly from a company that not only train people with no IT background, but a company that focuses on excellence. So I want to only attract people who are committed, who understand the commitment, who are willing to do the work, put in the amount of time because there's going to be a lot of work to be done um, to properly transition. You're going to be have to show up to class uh, uh, three times a week for two hours, but you have to be able to do some additional work on your own. So all that and um, the level of support we expect to give them, we, lim we will limit our enrollment. And that also allows us to have enough uh, application to only cater and serve the most committed prospects. Hey, man, I like that. I mean, because it's only going to it's, it's going to be mutually beneficial. You're going to get yeah. a group of people that are serious about what they're doing. You're going to make sure that they're not wasting their time and their money. And then also you guys can better serve those people and make sure that they exactly. have that that perfect outcome at the end of the day. So overall, I think that's a, a great idea to kind of, you know, limit it and then strategically grow from there. Maybe there's somebody in the program right now or somebody that's thinking about going into the program and they're thinking, they're visualizing, coming up towards the end of the program. How can they improve their chances of success of landing that first job after completing Yellowtail Tech? During the apprenticeship, not only doing the apprenticeship, going through it, but being committed to understanding every ticket you close, every every project you deliver, you have to be comfortable at articulating what it is you just did. So that's the most important thing uh, because um, the problem usually starts when you know the, th the stuff, you know your stuff, but you are not able to articulate it. And the reason why it usually happens is that they mechanically uh, 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 close the ticket 
and they move to the next one. No, you close the ticket and you understand why you did it and you try to even explain it to yourself or whoever, uh, uh, you know, your spouse, this is what I did and this is why I, 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 I did it. If you are able to do this, you're going to increase your chances on getting a job way faster than most because this is where uh, we have the most work to do is how do we help you articulate the, 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 the knowledge, we, the, the stuff we know you already know. How do you articulate it in a convincing manner? So this is uh, um, what someone could do to increase their chances by so much, by a mile, to actually get their job as, as, as fast as possible after the program. Yeah, if, you, if you're the best systems administrator in the world, but nobody knows it and you can't communicate it, you're not yeah. gonna be able to get a job at the end of the day. So yeah. you gotta be able to communicate that. It's very important. Because, because after all, I'm not a, a, a job agency. I don't promise you a job. I promise you a system that's gonna support you so you can go and interview for the job. So at, at one point, you have to go do the work of selling yourself. You see, so I, 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 we, we can do so much. So you have to take over and take responsibility and take ownership of that transition yourself as well. Hey, this has been a pleasure. I, I have heard nothing but great things about you. So not only you, but then your company as well. Um, I talked to JV King Bernard. I talked to your wife, Paloma. Um, talk to some other people that, that have worked with you and everybody's had nothing but great things to say about you and the program, Yellowtail Tech. Um, looked you guys up on Course Report, Career Karma, Google. Everything is just like raving reviews. Um, so even Reddit has some good stuff out there. And, you know, Reddit can be negative a lot of times. So um, I was really impressed overall with everything that you guys are doing. Um, Coming to a close, though, I want to kind of let people know what's the next cohort you have coming up. How can they sign up for it and all that kind of good information there? Our next cohort starts in uh, October 16th, uh, 2023 uh, for Linux for Jobs and October 24th, 2023 for Cloud for Jobs. And then we automatically are going to be enrolling um for um for january yeah okay good stuff yeah and I'll, I'll make sure to put like a link in the description so people can sign up for that and they, do they have to go through like a consultation before they can officially oh, yeah. enroll and yeah you have to uh go through uh talk to our enrollment advisor if you're going through the cloud for jobs you're going to go through a proper application process actually now we have so much a, a demand we have a, a waiting list you can put we're going to help you um, put your name on a waiting list for the cloud for jobs. Um, and yeah, but you definitely are going to be um, taken care of by our enrollment advisor. And then you go from there. We help you assess if this is the right program for you. We help you assess which program is the right program for you. And then uh, we go from there because the, the, what I prom one promise I have is that we will not sell you into either of our program if we are not convinced you can succeed. So that's one thing you, 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 can, you can believe with us. We are not in the business of just enrolling. We're in the business of enrolling people. We are at least um, have um, some type of um, understanding that they can actually not only complete, but transition properly into IT. Nice. Yeah, and I know, I know there's the financial component of actually paying for it. What do you guys, do you guys have some kind of um, financing options available or like how yeah. could GI Bill, yeah. anything like that? We have uh, multiple finance in, uh, uh, institution we work with that uh, can help you finance this. Yeah, definitely. Or we don't accept GI Bills, uh, a GI Bill and um, a federal um, uh, money yet. But that's uh, to come in the next six months. We are excited about that. We are working on that. But for now, um, we definitely have other um, very flexible options for, for our students uh, who wants to uh, actually be part of Yellow Tail Tech. Okay. 
Well, man, Juby, I want to give you the last second to like make any shout outs, make any announcements, anything I miss. Um, I'll kind of just open up the floor to you to kind of say anything you want to say before we uh, close out the show. Yeah, man. Usually I, I like to tell anyone considering IT to make sure you do it for the right reason. Don't only do it for the money. Do it because you have some inclination with working with computers because you're going to be working with that computer for many hours on end. So make sure you're comfortable with the idea of remote work and then you'll be fine and be willing to put in the work. You have to take ownership also of um, the work that needs to happen on your end. Uh, if that is something you're comfortable with, okay, dive in. But um, it takes work and we, are, we have the process in place. We have the support in place. If that's you, you know, look us up, Yellowtail Tech, anywhere, um, and you'll find a, a, a way um, to actually uh, get in touch with us. Perfectly said, man. Again, man, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I always have an open door policy for guests that, that come on. So any updates or any announcements, um, whenever you're ready, more than welcome to come back on. When you start accepting the GI Bill, definitely would love to have you come back yeah. on here so we can maybe do some veterans-focused uh, episode or interview or discussion around that. So uh, I can't yeah, wait man. because... Because um, that's going to open up, um, uh, uh, open us up to uh, serving not only veterans, but people with uh, um, uh, um, high security clearance to help them enter uh, um, GovTech, uh, which is a, a, a very interesting space um, that's um, crying for more talent. So I'm excited. Um, I would definitely let you know it, uh, once you, we're ready to actually open up that um, that side of the business. Yeah, and plus you guys are in Maryland, so this is like perfect exactly. sense, right? It's like yeah. so many different. I see so many different opportunities out there for security clearance positions and tech positions. So um, that that might just open up the floodgates and like, yeah, yeah. Be amazing. actually, um, another thing while we at it. Um, if you have a security clearance, but you don't have the tech knowledge, know that a transition in IT will be specifically easier for you. A lot of people don't realize that. A security mm -hmm. clearance, because a lot of places, they are looking for the, uh, the person with the uh, tech training and security clearance. And these two things very rarely come in the same person. <laughs> So if you have the security clearance already and you're ready to do the work, your journey will be an easier journey. That's a promise. So um, definitely reach out to us. Look, look into our program if you already have a security. Clearance. Yeah, man, I agree 100%. Um, I see the jobs and the roles out there all the time. So uh, definitely yeah. take advantage of that. If, if tech is something you're interested in, um, definitely check. I encourage you guys to check out Yellowtail Tech. I'll make sure to put a link in the description below so you guys can um, book a, a, a consultation with them to see if this is the right program for you. Um, yeah. I think it's a great opportunity for those of you who are interested in IT and tech to um, explore those opportunities. And cloud engineering, opportunities are only going to grow there. AI, cloud engineering, all these things, they, they're rare, you know, these are really starting to take off. They're already here, but they're starting to expand at a rapid rate. So definitely take advantage of that. I appreciate you guys for tuning in, watching the episode. I hope you gain a lot from it in terms of what to expect as a cloud engineer or a Linux systems administrator. And then also I hope you all check out Yellowtail Tech and see if this is something that would be interesting to you in your career journey. Um, my name is Andrew Baines. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you all next week. Peace. Peace.